Hi Tuners! My name is Alex. Welcome to Stage X Academy. In this series, we are giving you practical knowledge on how to do various calibrations on your own with the support of Stage X platform. Today, we'll cover a hot topic in modern petrol cars world. Overrun Burble, better known as Pops and Bangs. First, some background. Some time ago, almost every car's injection was managed by carburetors. It was common that even with closed throttle, after acceleration or engine rev up, a certain amount of fuel was still injected, decreasing the fuel economy and often generating specific detonation sounds. Nowadays, we know these sounds as pops and bangs. In the current automotive industry, with electronically controlled injection, all cars are equipped with a fuel cutoff function dependent on parameters like engine temperature, modeled exhaust gas temperature, catalyst heating, engine speed, its gradients, and many more. As a result, modern cars work more efficiently and were able to eliminate the additional acoustic effects such loved by petrol heads. Fortunately, with a proper ECU calibration, there is a solution to bring that characteristic sound back to our cars in a fully controlled manner. Today, we will show you how to activate pops and bangs on the example of MED 17.1.1 ECU. It was not developed for stock verbal functions, but Stage X gives you the ability to do it in a fast and intuitive way. Okay guys, let's jump to Stage X and start with our project. At first, we will focus on the injection changes. Let's open the pops and bangs directory in Stage X and search for a fuel cutoff delay map. The fuel cutoff is the function preventing our ECU from injecting fuel during deceleration or after a short and fast accelerator pedal press. There will be several maps to be adjusted. We need to set reasonable values as too long times may cause the risk of exhaust overheating, exhaust manifold cracks and fuel dilution into the engine oil. At first, we'll activate the cutoff delay only in the desired map range. Let's change the map axis to our needs. Now, when I set the absolute value at 800 milliseconds, the function after reaching 80 degrees and 3200 RPM will give us exactly 800 milliseconds of fuel cutoff delay. The ECU uses interpolation between map values to conduct changes in a smooth way, so there'll be a gradual change between zero and the set delay time. Okay, as a next step, let's go through the remaining maps and fill them in a similar way. At this stage, we will alter the lambda maps in order to enrich the lambda for the lowest load range and effectively lengthen injection time. As a result, we'll have more mixture to burn in the overrun. We can find these maps under the lambda control maps directory. Now let's open the lambda component protection and adjust the value for the lowest load on the range above the 3000 RPM. I am setting the absolute value at 095. I can apply this change to all similar maps, saving some time and letting Stage X do the job automatically. Okay, since we've set the cutoff delay, it's time to alter the ignition. Due to the way of controlling ignition, maps like minimum angle have been implemented to protect the engine and catalyst from overheating with too late values. To achieve sound effects, we have to ignite the mixture after top dead center, so the values have to be negative in most of the ECU. Some of them, Feature inverted signs with values below zero, meaning before top dead center, and above zero, which translates to after top dead center. Our particular case covers classic Metronic maps, so in that case, we need to search for the maps located in the ignition advanced timing. We are looking for a map called minimum ignition angle. We want here to change lower load values, matching the previous injection changes. So let's select the area above the 3000 RPM and load regions, let's say up to 40%. We can change it absolutely for the values from minus 7 down to minus 20 degrees, so in our case it can be set at minus 15. And as usual, let's change all similar maps identified by the system. Bear in mind that the later the ignition, the higher the combusted heat transfer to the head, manifold and catalyst. 
That is why there can be also a need that the ECU does ramp the ignition angle during overrun, so it will also sometimes generate the need to change the basic ignition angle maps in the same manner. Let's open a basic ignition map and change here values for the lowest load column above the 3000 RPM. Once again, I am setting the value at minus 15 degrees. Having that, I am applying that change to all similar basic ignition maps. Before we finish the file, there is still one more area where we need to make some changes. Modern cars feature special functions for heat transitions like catalyst heating, GPF regeneration, Miller cycle, Atkinson's cycle, etc. All of those generate the need to calculate the heat amounts in order to achieve a precise control of combustion. Practically, it does mean that most ECU allow fuel cutoff delay or minimum ignition angle only for a specified time, mainly due to the exhaust gas temperature control with the target below 1000 degrees. To bypass this, we can edit the exhaust gas temperature maps as it is a static reference. It is located in Lambda control maps. Let's open the exhaust gas temperature map and check the values. As we can see, that particular map does not exceed 1000 degrees, it is set at 970. In that particular example, it will be not blocking us, but let's reduce the maximum values a bit. I'll set the value at 950 degrees by changing the absolute value and, of course, applying the changes to all similar maps. Having that, now I am going to check thresholds for lambda protection as it's also triggered by EGT. These maps are also located in the lambda control directory. I am opening a map called exhaust gas temperature threshold for lambda protection and checking what we got inside. We need to assure that the values over there are lower than the ones we set in the previous step. The temperature was already set at 800 degrees, so there is no need to change it as the protection feature is working properly. But of course, if the value would be higher, you need to adjust it. Okay guys, we did it. Now we can save our project, export it and test the results on the car. As you can see, thanks to Stage X, we enabled pops and bangs in a simple and quick way. Remember that we are waiting for your comments, questions, and your suggestions about what you would like to see in future lessons. See ya in the next episode.